So I'm uh, back with part two. All right, let's continue here. So again, for we shall, for the Lord, we shall possess them in the land of the Lord, Yahweh, for servants and handmaids, and we shall take them captives, whose captives we were, and we shall rule over our oppressors. All right? Let's have a look here at a couple of words in here. See? Who shall be the servants and handmaids? Right? Let's start with that. Servants. What is a servant? A slave. See? Edomites are going into slavery. You see that? Slave, servant, man servant, subjects. All right? They're going into slavery. They're going to be bondmen and women. They're going into bondage. You understand that? And that's real easy, right? What does it say in the New Testament in Revelation 13 and 10? He who leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, right? Right? And who was that? Who led the Israelites into captivity? The Lord tells us who that is. Right in the curses in Deuteronomy 28, 48, 49, right? In verse 49, he tells us in 48, he would send our enemies unto us. Right? He tells us that. Give me a minute. Right? Let's read it here. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall send against thee. See? That he shall send against us. We're going to find out who that enemy is in the next verse, in verse 49. But let's continue. So he shall, the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in one of all things, right? They own everything, right? We have to go to them for everything. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Oh, they did that, didn't they? All right? Verse 49, and the Lord Yahweh shall bring a nation, listen up, a nation, right? Against thee from afar and from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flyeth. There's your symbolism. There's your allegory. There's your proof of who the Lord is talking about. But the Edomites don't exist anymore, right? That's their symbolism throughout history, going back to the Greco-Roman empires, to modern day uh, Germany, France, England, Spain. Here in America, Babylon the Great, do they not fly by the eagle? Case closed, people. Case closed. All right? Just like what's a dead giveaway? Their medical symbol. You have a cane. Their forefather spiritually goes back to Cain, which goes back to the serpent in the garden. And around the cane, in the symbol of their medical symbol, you have a snake wrapped around the cane. You understand that? And that serpent turns out to what? Turns out to be, you know, a seven head and ten horn dragon, a hydra, okay? The Edomite beast system, which in modern day is made up of America, Babylon the Great, the EU nations, and NATO that make up the beast system in modern day, which is only an extension, a last leg, an extension of the revived Roman Empire. Okay? And we'll get into that some more when we get into the article. All right? But there, you people see it. All right? This covenant has been shown to you. All right? So let's get back. All right? I want to look something else up here. All right? Let's look up Captain. Which, yeah, this is it right here. All right? To 
take captive, captive, see, to lead captive, all right? See, to be led and carried away into captivity. Didn't it say, doesn't it say there in Revelations 13 and 10, he who leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. They're going to be led into captivity. All right, so they're just trying to escape their judgment. Okay, but they can't do it. Okay, it's all over the scriptures. They can't undo it. All right, Nahum 1, verse 2 and 3. The Most High Yahweh is jealous. The Most High Yahweh is jealous. And he shall not at all acquit the wicked. All right? And all thy adversaries are going into captivity. And not only does it say it there, it also says it where? Jeremiah 30 and 16. Okay? All they that devour thee shall be devoured. And devour means to consume, to destroy. So all Esau, Edom, plus the 16 heathen nations, right? That's 17 in total. They all had a hand in this. Okay? They all benefited from having the Israelites in captivity in their nations. So they're going to be consumed and they're going to be destroyed. And all thy adversaries, every one of them. He didn't say some. He didn't say a few. He says all of them shall go into captivity. And all that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that preyed upon thee will I give thee for prey. Which what? Just like when we read Psalms, the second chapter, starting in verse 8, ask of me and I shall give thee, you know, the heathen for thy inheritance. Hello! And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. And again, we read the same thing in Revelations, the second chapter, verse 26 to 28. He that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. As a parson's metal, thou shalt break them to shivers. They can't get away from this stuff. This stuff is all over the scriptures. All right? All right? All right. And let me show you something here. All right? Let's do that. Let's go over there to, um, well, first, uh, let's go to Amos. Since we're here, let's go to Amos. All right. Go to Amos 9 11, right? What does it say here? In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David, talking about the elect of Israel. All right, that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and will raise up his ruins and build it as the days of old. You see that? And what is it like the days of old of David? An example of that? Let's go to uh, First Chronicles. Give me a minute. This is First Chronicles 18 and 13. All right. And it's talking about King David. And he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus, the Lord Yahweh preserved David whithersoever he went. You see that? So David reigned over all Israel and executed just judgment and justice among all his people. You see that? Do you understand now, people? Huh? You understand that now? All right? So, and in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise it up, raise up his ruins, and I will build it as the days of old. That day, right, the elect of Israelites, right, the house of David, as in the days of old, that they may possess a remnant of Edom. Now, this is talking about the lands. But obviously, this is also talking about Esau, Edom. You understand that? Okay? Just like we read in Isaiah 14 and 2. 
You understand that, people? Like we read, you know, uh, Jeremiah, I read it out to you, Jeremiah 30, 16, Revelations 13 and 10. You understand, people? So there's no way out, okay? There's no way out. And all the heathen. See that? And all the heathen. So Esau, Edom, plus the other 16 heathen nations. See? We're going to own their lands. Everything because they're going to be in captivity. There you go, people. There you go. All right? See, behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. See? You see that? See, everything is going to get turned around. Everything is going to go back. It's going to be back to a paradise, back to an Edom. Okay? See, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. We're not in authority yet until Yahweh Shai comes back. All right? But when the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. Is the earth in mourning? Yes, it is. So who's ruling? The people that they tell you are not ruling are ruling. You see? They take you to be stupid. They take you to be dumb. All right? Uh, where else would I, I'm going to show you? Let's also uh, do this. Let's also prove this. Let's go to Revelations. All right. Revelations, the 21st chapter, right? What does it say up here? And I saw a new heaven, and I saw a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. That's Esau's kingdom, right, which is passing away before your eyes. There was no more sea, all right? That's what's going to happen when the ICBMs get through with this place, all right? And I, John, right, John the Revelator, saw the holy city, right, New Jerusalem, that's talking about the elect of the Israelites that Yahweh Shai and the angels came back for. We're going to go up into the chariots. And then we're going to come back down, as it says here. Coming down from God out of heaven, right? Out of the heavens, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. See that? And that's the elect of Israel. That's not talking about Edomites or anybody of the other nations, right? Yet, Israelites will be gathered up of the elect from America, Babylon the Great, and all the places where we were scattered. You understand that? All right? That's simple. Okay? Now, uh, we jump down here. Let's see here. All right? So, here we go. And had a, a wall, great and high, Right? And had 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Where the hell is that? You said the 1948, there's other people, okay? Where the hell is that gate? Okay? Where the streets of gold? And on, on the east, three gates, and on the north, three gates, and on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Where the hell is all that? All right? And he talked with me, and he had the golden measure of the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. You see this? You understand that, people? All right? And the building of the wall, and it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto glass. Well, where the hell is all of this, Volcan? Huh? They're not the people, are they? No, it's a corporate state created between the British Empire and America, Babylon the Great. Okay? To set up, you know, the uh, the Tiemann branch, the German branch. Okay? Headed up by Amalek, the Amalekites, the bankers. Right? You people haven't got a hope and a prayer, man. Right? Yeah, you, you, you have inclusion into the kingdom. Yeah, you go on in captivity. There's your inclusion. All right, we're going to end this here, and we'll be right back uh, with part three so we can get started on the article. Shalom.